and greatest award ceremony with history. Today, we will welcome some of the most courageous people in all of World War II. These people were spies and double agents. The people that these agents tried to save often wished them death and painful injury. What were the mysterious double agents who lived on the very edge of their wits and whose espionage work confounded Hitler and the German secret services? As per encyclopedia's definitions, double agents are often used to transmit di disinformation. They, they are often very trusted by the controlling organization since the target organization will give them true but useless information to pass along disinformation in the context of espionage. Military intelligence and propaganda is spreading of deliberately false information to mislead an enemy as to one's positions or course of action. Sam, have you ever had a feeling like someone was watching you? That's because there is. Sam, stop watching me. No, really, there's a spy watching us. Who's Whose side are you? you? A Samuel and Jonathan production. Let's get on with the show. Now, we will acknowledge those who risked their lives to save others. Introducing... Jorg Ferdinand Jockwitz! Yay! The Danish Jews escaped the fate of the others because Danish citizens showed tremendous courage, yet they would not have been able to do so without f first the action of me. I lived in Denmark Him. for as long as I can remember, working for Nazis as a naval counselor. After the occupation began in 1940, I led a, a position of trust in the Third German Empire. It was I who warned the Jews their horrible fate, being relocated from Denmark on October 1st and 2nd, 1943. The Nazis thought the plan to be perfect because they would watch, catch the Jews when they least expected it in their homes and force them to board ships already anchored in Copenhagen Harbor. I was a member of the Nazis as, and was sent as a deal ambassador or to German task force in Copenhagen, Denmark. When I learned that Nazis were occupying the Danish rule and were planning to banish Danish Jews, I alerted the Danish control. For the action of warning Jews, I could have been killed. Luckily, the Danish resistance, in turn, continued the rescue of more than 7,000 Danish Jews. As a result, almost a all of the Danish Jews were protected in Sweden, one of the only places that were free in World War II. Thank you very much, sir. Your name will be remembered. Now, let's welcome Garbo, another double agent. My real name is Pujol Garcia, British code name. Garbo and German codename Annabelle. I helped to succeed Operation Fortitude, a deception operation intended to mislead the Germans about the timing and location of the invasion of Normandy towards the end of World War II, resulting in a decision to withhold troops from the area around Normandy. I came from Barcelona, which is a pro rule veteran of the Spanish Civil War. In January 1941, I decided to volunteer as a British spy. Then, I realized I would be more useful to British brains if I would already be a Nazi agent. I persuaded Gustavo Dieter, a Spanish agent of Germany's war brainpower service, that I can travel 
to in Britain and spy for Nazis and became airborne agents out of bed with invisible ink, secret codes, and 600 pounds for expenses. The problem was that I could travel no closer to Britain than Lisbon. So, starting on October 1941, I started supplying the war with in-depth reports on, on Britain that I researched at Lisbon's various libraries. But the war was impressed with the, in, with the accuracy of the material I supplied. In February 1942, I tried again to contact the Allies. This time, the United States Marine Lieutenant Patrick DeMorest reorganized my potential value. <laughs> Finally, I was accepted by British M15. By 1944, I was part of the Plan B for Operation Overlord and was prepared by Supreme Headquarters Allied Expeditionary Force, or S-H-A-E-F for short. The regular reports of Garbo's sub-agents and our sources were all written by British intellect to aid the Overlord Plan C. My agents provided the Ebor with lots of information about Allied preparations for the invasion of Norway. These found an interested audience. As historynet.com says, word of the bogus Norwegian invasion was time to concede with increased British naval activity against Norway. Consequently, German forces in Norway increased from 9 to 12 divisions by mid-May. As of D-Day itself, the reasons for this cannot be easily broken down and credited, but the double agents certainly contributed to the overall German strategic minopia. Right before D-Day, my German comrades and I took contact standby for an urgent radio message, which kept us from being available for other tasks. <laughs> This was followed in the early hours of D-Day with the news that the invasion was taking place in Normandy. My message was rushed directly to Adolf Hitler. With reports that Normandy was a diversion, Hitler delayed the movement of Nazi reserve. It was, in retrospect, my biggest hit. Imagine sending a prank letter to the most feared man on the planet during the war. It was hilarious when he actually fell for it. <laughs> The information I provided was part of the whole D-Day victory. Though the war was not over, I continued to supply the Germans with misleading information until the end of it. Thank you very much. We'd like to name some other double agents and spies that played an important role during World War II. They are known by their code names. Brutus, Charlie, Celery, Rainbow, Snow... Tricycle, Zigzag, Beetle, Dragonfly, Summer, and Father. The list is incomplete. Some of those people were lost in history, brutally killed and forgotten, like many other victims of the war. Those who gave their lives away to bring the victory and save the innocent people should not be forgotten. The, the search, search is on! on.